Cause like when Ric Flair said, he be like, I'm riding in the limousine 15 miles long. And when girls see me, they say, woo. Sometimes he's right back into it. Yeah, and go right back into talking. So it's like, sometimes it's a long one, but when he's talking about the girls, it's a quick one. All right, fair enough. Understood. There's a lot of different uses for the woo. 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 This. Is that no? Oh, we'll we'll workshop that. Right, exactly. That's we'll, like that, that's like a New Year's, like Happy woo-hoo. New Year. Woo! That's that's what, the one you just Woohoo! <laughs>
is Daniel Jones. Like everyone else that you, if you go to my rankings on rotorworld.com, NBCSportsEdge.com, and you see it, you'll see that I have Minshew at 15. And then the, the other potential streamers that I have, the, the, the Zach Wilsons, the Brock Purdy's, the Taylor Heineke's, the, the Nick Foles, the Malik Willis's of the world, the guys that are out there in more than 50% of leagues, they're all ranked below Gardner Minshew. So he would be my favorite. To your point, the Cowboys are a bottom 12 pass defense over the last month. They're a bottom 10 scoring defense over the last month. The Eagles still have a great offensive line. They still have A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. They're still they're getting back Dallas Goddard, right? And um, so I do think that Minchu, who doesn't have Jalen Hurts' rushing ability, but does give you some uh, upside with his legs and has an elite offense around him, I think he's a viable mid-tier QB2. And to your point, if you would normally start any of the guys that we just talked about, and I throw Miles Sanders in there as well, I think you're starting it with Gardner Minshew. Maybe you're lowering expectations a little bit, but the only one that I think is, you know, maybe a question mark, and honestly, I'm still starting him, especially if you, you know, look at where I've got him ranked, is Devontae Smith. You know, Devontae Smith's production has really come along with Dallas Goddard out, and we don't know what that's going to look like, but in a game, to your point, that the Cowboys are favored by almost a touchdown, yep. we figure Gardner Minshew is throwing and throwing quite a bit in this one. Yeah, 46 and a half is the total, so expect that to be scoring. Let's go to another... By the way, I like the Eagles to cover the six. I, that's too big a... Like, I get it. Jalen Hurts to Gardner Minshew is a downgrade, but I, I don't... I think along... I mean, I think people are not... I think they're discounting how good the Eagles' defense is. I think they're discounting how good the, the rest of the players are. And the fact of the matter is, is that Gardner Minshew has been a successful starter in the NFL. He's had an up-and-down career, and, you know, I mean, we're probably skewed a little bit by the fantasy stats and the mustache and, you know, the, the fun, <laughs> you know, hype around Minshew mania. But, like, he's not awful. Yeah, if he didn't have the mustache, the line would be eight. Uh, a thousand percent. Yeah. All right, let's get to another... Superstar quarterback who's injured. Do you, do you, do you agree with me, or you, you you like the Cowboys to cover the six? I like the Eagles plus six. I yeah. do. I think they have the best non-quarterback roster in the league, along with the 49ers. I think it's the Eagles and 49ers. That's and, my point. Uh, I still think that they really want to win this game. They <laughs> want to stick it yeah. to Dallas. I think they'll be going all out, even though they only need to win one of the last three. I think this will be close. Dallas, a lot of questions about them. Uh, a lot of questions about Baltimore as sure. well. Mainly at the quarterback position, Lamar Jackson did not practice yesterday. Don't know what the situation is going to be there. It's starting to feel like it's going to be Tyler Huntley again. It, it really does. And the weird, it's the weird part. Tyler Huntley was added to the injury report on Wednesday, right? He's got a right shoulder issue. I, he has not been great this year. No. He has not thrown a touchdown <laughs> pass. He's averaging single-digit fantasy points in his three games that he's played this year. By the way, just got a um, – literally, this is amazing. Uh, as, as I'm talking – as I'm talking, the Fantasy Life app uh, sends me an alert. Fantasy Life app, 100% free. I don't know why anyone doesn't have it, but um, Lamar Jackson not spotted at practice. That is a uh, that's a tweet from uh, uh, from Jonas Schaefer, who uh, who covers the team uh, for the Baltimore Sun. So. Um, uh, anyway, so Lamar Jackson not practicing on a Thursday as well. It's not correct. Not looking good for him. D doesn't mention Tyler Huntley, so I'm assuming he's uh, he's practicing today. It doesn't matter to me. There's two Ravens you want to start. Two Ravens only, right? I I think you're start. I think you're starting Mark Andrews. I know he's been bad with Huntley, but it doesn't matter. I think given tight end, you're still starting Mark Andrews, and then J.K. Dobbins, who I think, given especially the struggles of the passing game under Huntley. My expectation is, is that they'll go to run heavy, especially against a Falcons defense that's bottom five against the run over the last four weeks. Yep. Gus Edwards? Yeah, I mean, I think he's a viable flex. It's, uh, the, the problem with Gus Edwards, and this is always the problem with Gus Edwards, is he's not involved in the passing game, and he's going to get less touches than Dobbins. So he really needs a touchdown to pay off. Could he get it against Atlanta? Sure. Do I think he gets double digits, touchdowns, double digit touches in this game? I do. So he's a touchdown dependent flex. Gus okay. Edwards is. But the the guys that I am quote unquote putting into my lineup and not thinking about it, Mark Andrews and J.K. Dobbins, and that's it on the Ravens. Okay. Well, you would have been putting Ken Walker in your lineup and not thinking about it if he were healthy, but he is not no, dealing with the ankle. Seems one, like man. it's flared up. He looked a hundred percent healthy against the Niners. Amazing right. burst on that last reception towards the end of the game, but now it seems like he's what? not going to play. And that was the last week's Thursday night game. Yeah. So I mean, he's had you know at this point a week uh, basically to get healthy, and I'm with you. It looked looked like Ken Walker. Yeah. You know, and 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 had a decent showing against an incredibly tough 49ers defense, especially given that the, you know Seattle just couldn't get anything moving. Uh, but uh, it's not looking great. Now, 
so, yeah, Ken Walker is not practiced yet this week. We'll see if he shows up today or tomorrow. My guess is, again, because most teams are playing on Saturday, that in essence today is sort of a Friday practice, and the Friday practice is going to be kind of the Saturday walkthrough. So today is a big day as you're just looking through practice reports uh, throughout the NFL. You know, oftentimes we sort of blow off Thursday a little bit, like, well, let's see what he does Friday. But just again, remember, we're playing Saturday slate uh, other than three, yeah, four teams, I should say, uh, four games, eight teams. But um, Seattle is one of the teams that does play uh, on Saturday against the Chiefs. So, um, and by the way, the game is in Kansas City. So we'll also see does Ken Walker travel with the team. So we'll get some updates there. Seattle waved Tony Jones. Now, they re-signed Wayne Gallman to the practice squad, but my expectation here is that it would be some sort of mixture of Travis Homer and DJ Dallas. You think about week 14 when Ken Walker was out, Travis Homer played 91% of the snaps. He saw 85% of the running back touches. Now, in that game, DJ Dallas was not active, and he, DJ Dallas played a little bit last week, so my expectation here is it would be a little bit of a mixture, but I think I would prefer Travis Homer just because they're double-digit underdogs to the Chiefs, and... Travis Homer is more of the passing down back. They like DJ Dallas too, and they'll use both guys. I think it'll be a committee, but just my expectation is that Homer gets a little bit more passing down work than DJ Dallas. So if you're truly desperate to replace your, you know, a, a running back, Homer and uh, DJ Dallas in that order would be out there, assuming uh, Ken Walker does not practice today and is out for the week. Yep, and Greg Bell from the News Tribune is reporting that it looks like Ken Walker is in his flat shoes at practice, so likely not going to participate today either. You're giggling at flat shoes. Well, just it's not that's not good. <laughs> I mean, listen, I I wear flat shoes. I don't play football. <laughs> the way you your know? eyes lit up as soon as I said. Well, flat just shoes. I just you don't often get a fashion update. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's not ideal. By the way, like. You know, because the truth of the matter is, is that really, you know, in supposedly this show is all about, you know, helping our, you know, fellow, fellow, uh, our, all of our viewers and listeners. Supposedly. Supposedly the show is about helping our fellow listeners uh, and, uh, and viewers to win their, win their bets, to win their fantasy leagues, etc. But the truth is, if I'm being honest, if I can let you in a secret, just behind the scenes for a moment. What this show really is, is just a therapy session for me to bitch about my own fantasy teams. Yes. And you made my, that clear. And... I have I my long I'm in a league with all my college buddies. I've oh. been in this league for over 30 years. Just going to talk about Ed again? Oh, fuck. no, Ed's in my Ed's in an old work league. No, no, no. Tell with Ed. Um, no, no. This is so and I've it's a keeper league. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's basically a dynasty league. You keep 18 every single year. Uh, and um, uh, so I have Jalen Hurts on this team and Ken Walker. Yeah. And I mean it's I, bad. I right, I'm in the semifinals this week. Like yeah. I'm like, you know, You're I'm scared. I'm playing Yes, I am screwed. Ken Walker's I'm flat the, shoes. I'm the, I'm the They're three. Taking I'm you the, to hell. Like it's not fair. I'm playing the three seed. Yeah. Playing Charlie Wilkie, my buddy Charlie Wilkie, and freaking Wilkie's got a ridiculous team. He's got Chase and Jefferson, and Josh Allen. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> Damn Wilkie. Well, yeah, Damn Wilkie. Charlie Wilkie. <laughs> He's done it again. Yeah. Uh, that's what are you a tough do? break. My well, buddy Charlie. That's anyway, right. so I, I got my work cut out for my uh, myself in that league. Um, uh, and I'm trying to decide whether we're going to start Travis Homer as a oh flex. Boy, that's rough. That's yeah. rough. Also rough for the Tennessee Titans. Brian Tannehill, aggravated ankle injury. Looks like he's not going to play the rest of the year. Looks like it's going to be the Malik Willis show. The line in that game dropped from seven down to three. So the market doesn't respect Malik Willis too much, though it is still Derrick Henry up against the Houston Texans. But what does this do for the Titans? Obviously, you're starting Derrick Henry every week, but is there any pass catcher outside of your man Chiggy that you're interested in I, uh, with the Malik Willis show? I'm not. You know, it does at the moment, it does not feel like Traylon Burks is gonna gonna start. And even so, like he just, you know, you think about the Week Eight game against these same Houston Texans. He went six for 10, 55 yards. He he didn't throw a touchdown. He had an interception. And, and the, the one, the sort of calling card of Malik Willis that you sort of think, well, at least maybe he'll run. He'll get you some, you know, fantasy points. Maybe he could be like early season Justin Fields before the passing developed with Fields. Fields was still getting you points with his legs. Maybe he could be like a, you know, a poor man's Daniel Jones even. No blame. Five, five rushes, 12 yards. Week nine at Kansas City. Again, these, these are starts that he made earlier this year. Week nine at Kansas City. Um, uh, he, you know, Five of sixteen. Well, he didn't. He, I don't think he started the game against Kansas City. He um, Willis. Willis. Oh, he yeah. did. Yeah, that's he right. Did. He did. Yep. Anyway, but like again, eight rushes for forty yards yep. against the Chiefs. Five of sixteen for eighty yards. So it's just like even Chigigonquo, 
a Conquo, who I, you know, I love. You know, you, me, you I love, love him a lot. I, I love getting chiggy with it. Yes, I do. love the production, and I love being able to make that joke every single time. Because, would you, you like? Know, would you I'm, like him if I his live, name was Ryan Daniel? No. Or yeah, exactly. No. Yeah, be of him. Yeah, but exactly. Yeah. But, but tight end twenty. Chiggy Conquo, like let's get chiggy with it. Like I love that. But um, anyway, so. I'm avoiding Malik Willis uh, this week. Uh, I think other than Derrick Henry, you don't have confidence in any of these guys. Aconquo is like literally like a mid-tier tight end two streamer, and, you know, it's against Houston. So it's just like you have to squint to sort of talk yourself into it just because he's been – Willis has not been great um, so far as a passer uh, in his uh, rookie year. Yep, indeed. All right, let's get to running back. Love, and By the way, the other, the, I can't believe you, you, you missed this one thing, though. Hang on, wait, before we go to the graphic, guys, I wasn't ready. Not ready yet. Stop with the graphic. What are we doing? I could stop. Oh, my, we can't. No, well, I guess it's apparently one, it's, a, it's a runaway train. Once you get the graphic going, you can't stop it. It is what it is, and now it's frozen. Okay, uh, there's no going back. It's like the, but I, the money train, whatever I, that right. movie is. Totally. Wesley Snipes? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, well, what, it wasn't, oh, Bullet Train was the one with Brad Pitt this no, past right, summer, I'm right? I'm thinking money train. Um, uh, either way, uh, you and I are, are a train of fantasy information, <laughs> sort of. But I wanted to give you a moment here. Hang on for a second. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, I'm I'm coming because I think we 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 blew past the biggest storyline of this whole thing. So Malik Willis is not only starting this week, but it looks like Ryan Tannehill is done for the year. Yeah. You know, and um, uh, Pro Football Talk and and others are uh, speculating that that looks to be the case. And as a result, mm. do you I know who is going. do you know who is favored now? To win the AFC South? My Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> there, there we go. Minus 145 on BetMGM. How about that? Let's go but Jags. I, will, I want to give you credit. I mean, the bandwagon is now full. You don't have any room. You jumped off and, we, and it's filled <laughs> sure, up before off. you get I'm a chance off. to come it's back sad. on. But, and we'll see what obviously happens tonight in the game against the Jets. But the fact is, I want to give you credit, though. You've said throughout this year that in terms of what the line was, that you you liked the Jaguars at plus money to win this division. This is yep. one of your bets early in the season as well that you loved. I think they were like plus 700 at one yeah, point, right? I think, yep, plus 700, plus 750, that range. And the beauty of placing a bet is that even when you hop off the emotional bandwagon, like I did on the Jags a few weeks ago, when I was just sick of watching this team get blown out by the Lions by 26 points, the bet is placed, Matthew. The bet cannot be undone, no. so I will ride them to the no. AFC South. It's going to come down to that Week 18 game where the Jags host the Titans, but if it's Malik Willis, that line might be like minus six. By the way, can you imagine? By the way, I mean, I don't think they've they have figured out what game they're going to flex into Sunday Night Football. Jags on, Titans. It could be. <laughs> yeah. it could be Jags Zay Jones Titans, baby, for the Willis. AFC South, South title <laughs> right here on NBC and Peacock. We will see. Unbelievable. Um, all right, but, let's all right. talk about Josh Jacobs. Yeah, running back love now. Yeah. Now they can roll the graphic. Yeah. But I think they already rolled it. Yeah, we don't need to. We don't need, we don't need, we don't need to bring back the money train. Yeah, the money train's <laughs> yeah. already gone through. Yeah, Josh Jacobs, the best running back in football this year. It, like, if ever there was an example, the poster boy of, like, how crazy this year is, they gave up on him. The, the Raiders gave up on him. Fantasy managers were done. He, he's become, like, one of, if not the best bargain in terms of ADP versus production. Since week 10, he's getting so much work. 29 touches a game. That is the most in the NFL. And then you're like, okay, well, great. So he's got a lot of work. Will he be successful with it? Oh, yes, he will. Because running backs who get at least 15 touches in a game against the Steelers this year, averaging 19 fantasy points per game. By the way, three of the last four Steelers giving up over 110 uh, rushing yards per game. You see the game log on your screen right there just in terms of the amount of work that Josh Jacobs is getting. Josh Jacobs is a top four running back play this week on the road at Pittsburgh. Yep. There's a little concern about his finger injury that he did against the Rams, but apparently just fine. 26 touches. He's got, you know what? He's got nine others. Yeah. He's got nine <laughs> yeah, others and exactly. two legs. We're good. He's tough. Let's well, go. Josh Jacobs. He yeah. is actually. Like, give, uh, you yeah. know, I've had a love-hate relationship with Josh Jacobs over his NFL career, yep. but uh, I have never questioned the man's toughness. Yep, absolutely. All right, let's talk about Alvin Kamara, who quietly... Didn't really, I don't think many people are tracking this because he didn't have a huge fantasy day, but he did have 21 carries yeah. against the Falcons, and he's on the love list. He is. And look, if you're in the playoffs this week, it is likely in spite of Alvin Kamara, yes. certainly not because of him. He has been a massive disappointment this year, hasn't been the bargain you thought he would. But he comes in at running back 12 for me, and I think it's right. It's it, What it is is like talent. We know he's We know it's in there. It's good. It's also volume. To you mentioned, you mentioned the 23 total touches last week. That's the most in a game since week six. Mark Ingram isn't there. They have David Johnson. They have Eno Benjamin. They just signed off the street, like or or away from Houston. Like, like it. It should be the Alvin Kamara show, especially when you look at what's going on in Cleveland. The weather is expected to be, you know, really windy, 
really cold, like 10 degrees. So it is gonna be nasty, freezing, windy, unideal conditions to try to pass the ball. So my expectation is, is that they wanna run the ball a lot with Alvin Kamara, especially when you think about how you attack Cleveland's defense. Browns give them the second most yards per carry to running backs. They've allowed the most rushing touchdowns, to, I'm sorry, the second most rushing touchdowns to running backs this year. Like you can run on the Cleveland Browns. And so, especially given how bad the weather is expected to be there on uh, this weekend in Cleveland, yeah, give me Alvin Kamara as a top 12 play. I think the other thing there is Chris Olave hasn't practiced the no. past two days with his hamstring. He was on a limited snap count against the Falcons. So I would say it's very unlikely that Chris Olave is going to play against Cleveland, which just ties into uh, yeah, running the ball when you don't have any wide receivers and this 30 mile per hour wins anyway. And Andy Dalton's your quarterback yeah. anyway. I suspect it will be a big game for it, Alvin Kamara. I mean, they'll have to pass at some point and they'll try. But so, you know, if, you, if you're looking to the Saints and Olave doesn't play, I think it's I think Rashid, Rashid Shahid. Yeah. You know, honestly, Jawan Johnson becomes sort of interesting because him and Dalton have had Touchdown a connection, machine. and right. You know, I mean, he's just he's been a pretty good streamer there. But uh, yes, I do think that I get it. It's been tough with Kamara, but I do think you get a Christmas miracle here with Alvin Kamara finally at the very last. <laughs> if you manage to survive this long with AK-47 as your running back, my expectations are on Saturday that Kamara has a big day. Yep. Also, a big day looming for the Kansas City running backs. Derek McKinnon and Isaiah Pacheco get a very tasty matchup against a Seattle run defense that, I mean, they were okay against the Niners. They were a lot better than I thought, just in terms of limiting Christian McCaffrey's efficiency. But they got lit up by Deontay Foreman and Chuba Hubbard, completely lit up by Josh Jacobs. Even Cam Akers showed signs of life against them. And both KC running backs are on the love list. Well, sure. And by the way, against San Francisco, they could focus a little bit more. They could say, like, hey, we'll take our chances with Brock Purdy. Yeah. They can't do that with Patrick Mahomes. No. And right? it didn't really work against Brock Purdy either. No, it didn't yeah. either. No, it didn't. I mean, McCaffrey still had a monster game in, yes. that, uh, in that Thursday night game. Look, since week 10, the Seattle Seahawks are allowing 211 yards from scrimmage <laughs> per game to running backs. 211. Not a, no. not a typo. Yes. 211 yards from scrimmage to opposing running backs since week 10. They've given up multiple touchdowns to running backs in three of the last four. And so McKinnon, you know, we don't need – McKinnon has been the number one running back in fantasy each of the two weeks with back-to-back -back games of over 120 yards from scrimmage. And it's not just fluky plays. Like, that's what makes the highlight. But his snap count has increased yep. each of the last four weeks as they're getting close to the playoffs. They're increasing McKinnon's usage. McKinnon, of course, was such a big part of what they did in the playoffs last year. And then Pacheco, again – the volume has been there. Six straight games now, uh, Jay, with at least 15 touches and at least 80 yards. And so against the Seattle defense, both guys are locked in top 20 plays for me. Yep. Okay, let's get to some others receiving votes. Headlined by friend of the show, Raheem Mostert, who's looking like Marshawn Lynch against the Buffalo Bills last Saturday. Raheem the dream. Raheem must start. The fact of the matter is, is that Jeff Wilson Jr. returned to practice, but even if he's active in this one, you like him at home against a Packers defense that's allowed a rushing touchdown to a running back in four of the past five games that is the second worst run defense over the last month I also like Latavius Murray Chase Edmonds uh, has been activated off the IR but my expectation is that Edmonds basically takes the Marlon Mack role not and Latavius Murray who's had at least 20 touches in three of the past five games his volume stays the game stays the same against a Rams defense that's allowed at least 85 yards from scrimmage in five of their past six games, uh, including letting Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon run all over them last week. I mentioned a uh, J.K. Dobbins earlier in the show. 120 rushing yards in both games since returning. Falcons allow the fifth most rushing yards per game to running backs since week 10. And finally, if you're desperate, speaking of the Rams, you see Cam Akers there on your screen. Look, Played 75% of the snaps last week. Had a 15% target share. He's had at least 13 touches in four of the past five games. He is uninspiring, but it is not a scary matchup against Denver. We've seen teams have rushing success against the Broncos, and the volume has been there. So he's a low-end flex for me, but maybe he falls into the end zone. Yep. Let's get to the hate list. This is sad. Brian Robinson's the headliner. I mean. How do you feel about yourself, Matthew? I. You know, listen, that's a lot to unpack in just uh, the short time that we have in this segment. You know, um, I don't feel good about myself, but this is this should be evidence to all of our listeners and viewers that, you know, listen, I'm a I'm a Washington Commanders homer. You guys know this, but when it Simon. comes to the love hate list, I am objective. And the fact of the matter is, is that Brian Robinson, uh, you know, last week he was fighting the Giants and the refs. Hopefully this week it's just the opposing team and it's not, you know, some some referee with an agenda that, you know, tells Terry McLaurin one thing and then throws a flag, um, the complete opposite of what he said. Uh, but I digress. The fact of the matter is, is that Brian Robinson faces the Niners. 
No team in the NFL has allowed fewer rushing yards per game to running backs than the San Francisco 49ers. They've not allowed one running back to reach 60 rushing yards in a game all season. Last week, uh, in a game in which the commanders were trailing, Robinson was out snapped by Antonio Gibson 38 to 24. My commanders are a seven point underdog in this one. I just don't see Robinson getting enough work. Maybe he falls in the end zone, and but uh, this is as low as I've had him all year. He's my running back 34. And then Jamal Williams as well. Speaking of no passing game work, yeah, it's I mean, b- believe it or not, Brian Robinson actually has more passing game work recently than Jamal Williams. Three straight games with under 40 rushing yards, seven straight games with zero receptions. I, I, like seven straight games without a reception. Um, you know, his snap rate is below 40% over the last three. Carolina Panthers, we've talked about that. They keep pounding. They're a top 10 run defense over the last month. I, I, they're, they're using Justin Jackson more than I would think. Yeah, Justin yeah, Jackson. I mean, I mean, Renaissance but anyway, like exactly. Justin Jackson, DeAndre Swift. So, Jamal Williams, basically, you're hoping for a touchdown, but it's he's part of a three-headed committee. He's not getting any passing down, down passing game work, and it's a tough matchup against Carolina. So, outside my top 30, Jamal Williams this week. That makes sense to me. All right, we're going to go to break, but before we do, we're going to read a little promo, Matthew. All right, go for it. Promo your heart out. He's the styling and profiling son of a gun, the new Peacock original documentary. Woo! Becoming Ric Flair gives you the full story behind the WWE legend streaming now only on Peacock, Matthew. How was that? It's always going to be strange whenever Tyler's not playing or, you know, somebody has been there for so long um, not playing. Um, but um, just another challenge along the way that we got to overcome. How do you feel about playing in the cold? The cold? No, I'm, I'm not worried about it. I may go out shirtless for a warm-up, so I don't care about the cold. Jay Crouch are extremely afraid of the cold, in yeah. fact. Uh, as and you. afraid of DK Metcalf. Honestly, I'm afraid of both. <laughs> yes, exactly. To be perfectly honest. Particularly um, when in tandem. But yep. pass catcher love hate. DK Metcalf is the first name on the list. He is. You heard the voice of DK Metcalf just there talking about the fact that they're having, in, in addition to <laughs> wanting to go shirtless on sun, uh, this weekend against the Chiefs, he wants to, uh, you know, the, it's going to be a challenge without Tyler there, but, you know, they're going to step up. And so the fact that there is no Tyler Lockett in this game, you feel good about DK Metcalf, who, by the way, so far this year, leads all players in the NFL in terms of end zone targets. So even with Tyler Lockett there, he's getting a lot of looks in the end zone. You expect him to get even more. No team in the NFL has given up more touchdowns to opposing wide receivers than the Kansas City Chiefs. So I like DK Metcalf's chances at an anytime touchdown in this one. Wide receivers that have seen at least seven targets against Kansas City. And again, with no Tyler Lockett, we expect Metcalf to be peppered with them in a game in which the Seahawks are double digit underdogs. Wide receivers who have seen at least seven targets against the Chiefs this year, averaging 20 points per game. DK Metcalf, a top seven play for me this week. All right, let's stay in that game. Let's go to Juju Smith's shoes. Those shown plenty of healthy signs yeah. of life. And now gets the Seattle pass defense. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? The fact of the matter is, is that Seattle allows the fifth most yards per reception to the slot, which is obviously where Juju lines up quite a bit. When Juju has seen at least five targets this year, he's averaging 16.4 fantasy points per game and so with 21 targets over the last two games feels like he's finally back to being juju uh, pre-concussion him and Mahomes on the same uh, on the same page they're connecting yeah give me Juju Smith-Schuster as a top 15 play this week okay speaking of revivals Deontay Johnson much maligned still will never score a touchdown apparently in his entire life but he's been getting a ton of targets the past few weeks he's got a 34.6 percent target share over the last four games Right, and including 40% in two of the last three. At some point, he has to score a touchdown. He's had 123 targets this year, zero touchdowns. At some point, at some point, the man has to get in the end zone. And so against the Raiders, I think he's got a shot at it. He has at least one end zone target in six of the past eight games. They're working on it. They're trying <laughs> to get him some looks here. It reminds me of like when Martin Scorsese never winning an Oscar. Like yeah. Deontay Johnson never getting a touchdown, but he won an Oscar for The Departed. and. Deontay Johnson is going to score a touchdown one day. Yeah, he absolutely will. And perhaps it's this week. Can he pick it back under center for the Steelers? You like that. I have Deontay Johnson as a top 20 play in week 16. All right, let's go to some others receiving votes. Sure. Headlined by Darius Slayton. 
wide receiver one in New York. He really is. He's had at least 20% target share in five of the last six games. Since week 10, he's playing the Vikings, right? And since week 10, Minnesota allows the most receptions and the second most yards per game to opposing wide receivers. Look, Gabe Davis, I, boy, oh boy. If ever there was a guy that he's like, he's Deontay Johnson, also and, East, you yes. know, but the fact of the matter is, is that he's also a guy that is due. Uh, the fact of the matter is the Bears allow the fifth highest completion rate on deep passes this season. We know they're going to target Gabe Davis uh, deep. I'm as a top 30 play wide receiver 29. Uh, Detective Drake London <laughs> makes the list here. He's had a 46% target share over the last two weeks. Back to back games with six receptions for the first time this season. They'll be trailing in Baltimore and having to throw. Hey, if you need a tight end, Noah Fant playing the Chiefs again. No Tyler Lockett here, which leaves a 23.5% target share. Marquise Goodwin will get some of that, but my expectation here is that Fant, who scored in two of the last three games, uh, should get some of that target share. Meanwhile, the Chiefs are bottom six in terms of most touchdowns allowed to opposing tight ends. And we talked about my guy, Chiggy Akonkwo, earlier in the show. Four straight games with at least five targets. He's the fourth best tight end in fantasy over that stretch. 60% snap rate last week. It is Malik Willis under center, so I'm a little nervous about him, but you know, he's a tight end too with upside. He's yep. a touchdown dependent tight end too. Little nervous you know. about Chig. Also a little nervous about Amari Cooper as we flip to the hate list. Amari Cooper's not being able to do, do anything with Deshaun Watson. Uh, I, I mean, not a little nervous, really nervous. He's been brutal with Deshaun Watson. Every, all three games that Watson has started, he's been under 60 uh, receiving yards. He's been under nine fantasy points. Yep. Under nine fantasy points. Like, and, and then you think about this game. Temperatures expected to be around 10 degrees. Winds of 30 miles per hour. And could reach all the way up to 50 miles per hour. Amari Cooper has traditionally not played well in the cold. It's windy, so you think they're going to struggle to really pass the ball. The over-under is 32 and a half. Yeah. That is the lowest. That is tied for the lowest since 2009. Bad weather game, cold, windy. He hasn't had success with Watson yet. Low scoring game. I, you would have to be truly, truly desperate to start Amari Cooper. I will, the, the league in which I have Jalen Hurts and I'm not going to have him, the, the playoff team, my, my, uh, my, my college buddy league, no Jalen Hurts, yeah. no Ken Walker. I'm not playing Amari Cooper yeah. in that league. Like, I'm, I'm literally starting uh, Gabe Davis, Adam Thielen, and, uh, you know, somebody else. Like, so, you know, I, I'm trying to think who else it is. But somebody that's not good. Yeah. But, you know what I mean, because it's, it's a deep league, and it's, uh, like, my wide receivers, I've, I've gotten a lot of hurt. I, like, Brandon Cooks. If Brandon Cooks comes back, or maybe I'll start Elijah Moore tonight. Like, that's what I'm looking at. That's but I, don't, I want all those guys over Amari Cooper is my point. Like, it's an, that's a murderer's row of like, eh. I and still. The way to think about it is the total's 32 and a half. The line's two and a half. So the expectation is the score is going to be like 17-15. So how many points are there to go around fantasy-wise? Not many. Let's go to uh, Marquise Brown, uh, who's in uh, another game with a low total against the Bucks, where the total there is 40 and a half on Sunday Night Football. The Bucks now seven and a half point favorites. But Marquise Brown has done nothing since coming back. He's seen eight targets in all three games, and yet... He's averaging just 33 yards. He's playing the the slot role. Like, just it's really, it's weird, right, the usage. They're not taking really deep shots to him. When they are taking deep shots, it's going to DeAndre Hopkins. And so um, he's had three, three receptions that have gained more than 10 yards since he's come back. Like, I mean, it's his average depth of target is really, really short. And so maybe the volume gets here, but Trace McSorley is expected to start. We don't have high expectations for him against the Buccaneers. Their offensive line is so beat up Arizona. Like they just, whether it was, you know, we saw it with Colt McCoy and then, uh, you know, McSorley, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm out on Marquise Brown. He's outside my top 30 this week. And finally Dawson Knox, the hero from last week. I get it. But the bears for all their struggles this year, they allow the fewest receptions and the third fewest yards to opposing tight ends. Knox, when he doesn't score a touchdown, you talk about touchdown-dependent tight ends. When Dawson Knox doesn't get into the end zone, he averages a 6.2 fantasy points per game. And so the Bears, who have allowed just three touchdowns to tight ends this entire season, the last one coming in Week 10, this just feels like a really tough matchup for Dawson Knox. He is truly touchdown-dependent in a matchup where he's unlikely to score one. Yep. All right, let's go to break. When we come back, quarterback love-hate headlined by the Mercurial to attack by Lowell. That's a, good, that's a good adjective for him. Yeah. I'm 
Um, I remember the, the night he went in at halftime and in the national championship game, and I think it, just like everybody else, we're thinking, what? Why? And then obviously he showed his incredible ability and had a great career uh, down there. I enjoyed the way that he plays. He plays on time. He throws the ball accurately. Does a nice job with his eye control for a young player. He's got obviously good pocket movement. He can extend plays. They've, he's, they've had a couple pretty incredible uh, fourth quarter comebacks this year. Um, where he's been super efficient. You know, he has some, some great weapons, but I've uh, been impressed with the way he plays. I like the way he handles himself, too. I think he handles himself with a lot of respect and class, and I think there's a lot to be said for that for a young player. All right, that was Aaron Rodgers praising the mercurial to attack of Iloa. I'm going to go back to the well on that adjective because I like it. Yeah. How do they match up on Sunday? The total there is 49 and a half, so it's going to be very fantasy rich, you would expect. And Tua Tagovailoa, who is the most divisive quarterback that I can remember, uh, he's on the love list. He makes the love list. He is mercurial, but this week I'm in on Tua. Part of the reason is because of this matchup. Green Bay allows the second highest completion rate on deep passes. That is an area that you can attack the Packers. And, well, guess who has the second most completions on deep passes this year? Yeah, it helps having Tyreek Hill. It helps having Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. And since week 10... Packers also allow that uh, allow touchdown passes that fit the highest rate. This is a game that so much has talked about how the Packers need to win out, and this is a must-win game for the Packers. This is a must-win game for the Dolphins, 100%. too. This is a big game for the Dolphins. They need this. Game's in Miami. Give me Tua Tungavailoa as a top-five play this week. Yep. I think, obviously, you have to play Tua against that defense. A little bit worried. He's been, he's been bad he has the been. past two weeks. So he's, Mercurial is, a, yeah. is an apt S swings, description of Swings it. both ways. But uh, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, whatever. I'm, I get it if you, you're out on Tua and you might be like, thanks, Barry, because I'm out of the playoffs because of Tua, which I get. But if you manage to survive and you're still in, I'm, you know, I'm in on Tua Tagovailoa. Yep. The guy's weirdly been more consistent than Tua Tagovailoa has been Geno Smith, who I don't think has played great the past month, but he's been able to put up stats. He has been, and every quarterback that has faced the Chiefs so far this year, uh, except Malik Willis and Bryce Perkins, and I think he's obviously <laughs> significantly a cut above of either of those guys. But every quarterback that's faced the Chiefs this year, except those two guys, have thrown at least two touchdown passes against the Kansas City Chiefs. Again, Perkins and Willis didn't even really attempt to throw passes. We know Geno's going to throw the ball quite a bit. By the way, congratulations to Geno Smith on making the Pro Bowl yes. for the first time in his 10-year career. Unbel just one of the best stories in the NFL. And I think he's going to have a good story this, Sunday, uh, this, sorry, this Saturday as well. No team in the NFL has given up more touchdown passes than the Kansas City Chiefs. They've actually given up five more than any other team. And again, this is not a surprise, but teams that face the Chiefs average 36 pass attempts per game. That's fourth most in the NFL, even without Tyler Lockett here. Considering they're 10 point underdogs in this one, I think Geno Smith is throwing and throwing often to DK Metcalf, to Marquise Goodwin, to Noah Fant, to the running backs. Give me Geno Smith as a top six play this week. Yep, you can throw on the Chiefs. Even uh, Gino's predecessor, Russell Wilson, had an amazing game against the Chiefs last time we saw him. That's so right. expect that Gino will go off. Let's get to some others receiving votes. Headlined by a quarterback who hasn't played as well as Gino Smith this year, and that's Tom Brady. Yeah, Tom Brady has uh, as well. Look, uh, Arizona, they've, they're tied for the second most touchdown passes allowed. They actually give up touchdowns at the fourth highest rate. And they allow the highest completion percentage to opposing quarterbacks. Brady looked like Brady last week, full complement of weapons. Russell Gage is back. Julio Jones expected to play here, right? You got Evans and Godwin, of course, as well, plus the running backs. We don't expect much from Trace McSorley on the other side, so perhaps, uh, you know, there's some short field opportunities. They get a turnover or something like that. So uh, in a game uh, against Arizona where they're favored, I like Tom Brady as a top 10 play. I also like, uh, you see Daniel Jones there on your list at Minnesota. Since week 10, Vikings allow 308 passing yards per game. That is most in the NFL. Daniel Jones has at least 30 pass attempts and 10 or more rushes in two of the past three. I think he's a viable streamer this week. And we talked about Gardner Minshew at the top of the show with Jalen Hurts out. Multiple touchdown passes in both of the starts with the Eagles last year. This is a better Eagles team than it was last season. More weapons as well. Obviously, the addition of A.J. Brown. Over the last four weeks, I think people would be surprised to learn this stat. Cowboys are allowing touchdown passes at the sixth highest rate. I also want to give out a shout, a shout out quickly to Kirk Cousins. Speaking oh, about Mercurial. Man. Speaking about Mercurial, so I do Kirk. think Kirk Cousins has a viable game against the Giants as well. Do you know he scored uh, at least 18 fantasy points in six out of eight home games this year? I did not game know Game is at home. I don't expect him to be down by 33 points and having to throw a ton in the second half like he did last week. But sneakily, 
The over-under in this game is 48 and a half. Yeah, Giants pass defense, just nothing there. Over the last four weeks, they allow the eighth most yards per pass attempt to your point. So I think Kirk Cousins is a viable love this week as well. Top 10 play for me. Yeah, good luck defending Justin Jefferson, New York Giants. Uh, let's get to the hate list where you've turned on your man Trevor Lawrence, though it's not oh so much a reflection on him as the defense of my New York Jets and this man, Sauce Gardner, and then also the rain. Yeah, I mean, you know, listen, I love my Swaguars, but tough matchup, short week, bad weather. We expect really bad weather tonight in New York. And, oh, by the way, the Jets are pretty good on defense. Since week four, no team in the NFL allows passing touchdowns at a lower rate than your New York Jets. They've had 11 straight games now where they've given up one touchdown pass or fewer. Since week four, the only quarterback to score even 15 fantasy points against the Jets is Josh Allen. It's the fourth best pass defense on the year. Trevor Lawrence uh, outside my top 12 today. For this week, I should say, and, and obviously tonight. Yeah, and then he'll be back in. He'll be yes. back in. Texans next week. Uh, he'll bounce back for that. And then Titans week 18. So big finish coming up for Trevor Lawrence. Probably not tonight. Deshaun Watson has looked more competent, progressing each week, but still hasn't looked great. Hasn't looked like Deshaun Watson from no. his Houston time. And now he gets a really a better and improving Saints defense and also 30 mile per hour wins. Yeah, exactly. And freezing cold weather and, uh, you know, he's averaging 11.4. Like, he's not even been good. Like, even if this game were in perfect conditions, even if this game were played in New Orleans in the Dome, yeah. you're like, he's averaged under 12 fantasy points a game in his three starts since he came back. He's averaging 11.4. Yep. So in your, are you, if you're in week 16, if you're in the fantasy playoffs, you got, there with, you got there with a quarterback better than Deshaun Watson. And, and so he's, there are other viable streamers out there that I prefer to Watson. And then you think about, right, it's freezing cold weather. It's also uh, going to be super, super windy. Passing's going to be really tough. I am a QB 21, and I might not be low enough on him. Yep, I'm with you there. All right, let's go to break. When we come back, Thursday night football preview. My New York Jets, Sauce Gardner, going head-to-head -head against Matthew Swaggywar. Yeah, buddy. You can't do as a, as a quarterback. It's not. I'm not playing against Zach. You know, I'm playing against the Jets defense, and it's just. You know, it's it's annoying when people can compa always compare all that because it's not what it's about. It's not how the game should be played. I would just say it's you know it's the Jets versus the Jaguars. You know, we're we're, we're just trying to go against those guys. You know, um, it, it's it's interesting because it's almost like it's you know two separate things when you're sitting there watching the other quarterback. It's like it's not even the same kind of game. You know, we're going against their defense, so it it is separate, of course. You know, but you're always trying to go out there and get that win. All right, that was Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson. Picks one and two in the draft a couple of years ago. Going head to head tonight in a game that I think is not gonna be defined by either of those guys. It's gonna be a defensive struggle as we get into last call. Yep. Now, Trevor Lawrence, he's on the hate list, Matthew, but the pass catches for the Jags. Any interest in starting guys like Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, uh, in these conditions against the Jets defense, which I think, I think the Niners have the best defense in the NFL. I think the Jets might be second. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I, I've lowered expectations for both these guys. I mean, if there's a positive here for Christian Kirk and Zay Jones, it's that it's pretty much those two guys, right? Evan Ingram as well. But weirdly, they don't use the, the running backs that much in the passing game. It's not really the, the complimentary receivers to those two guys. It is a fairly narrow target tree, right? Christian Kirk has eight straight games with at least seven targets. Zay Jones, since week 10, has a 28% target share. Uh, sorry, 27% target share. Uh, you know, and so including 51 targets in his past five games, Zay Jones. And so now some of that, again, is, is dictated by a game script. You know, they were down big to the Cowboys and everything like that. But um, the fact of the matter is, is that uh, when Trevor Lawrence is throwing, he's going to throw to those two guys. Now, I think Sauce Gardner is probably on Zay Jones the most. Christian Kirk lines up in the slot the most. So if I had to pick one, I have Kirk rated higher. I'm at 19. I have Zay Jones at 25. So again, Christian Kirk to me is a low-end wide receiver too tonight. Zay Jones is a mid-tier flex. Um, Evan Ingram is a you know viable tight end you know streamer. He's tight end eight for me. Thirty-two targets over his last three games. That that's sort of interesting too. But 
I'm not excited about any of them. No, particularly with Quinn and Williams, looks like he's going to play. Like the Jets defense, and the thing about the Jets defense is that it's wide receivers who line up out wide that struggle the most because the heart of this defense is Sauce Gardner, uh, yeah. who, like, <clears throat> Josh Allen didn't throw the ball to Stefan Diggs against right. Sauce Gardner. They just gave up. Like, no, he's out. Uh, this is like, this is Darrell Rivas 2.0 with Sauce at the moment. He's that good. DJ Reed as well is also one of the 10 best cornerbacks in the league, but you can get some joy against the Jets in the slot because the linebackers aren't as good. And then also with running backs in the passing game too. So Travis Etienne, uh, I mean, I think he's going to get a significant workload. But running back on the other side, we hope... Before, just to your point on Christian Kirk, 76% of his targets have come from the slot this yep. year. So yeah, I mean, again, I think he's... I think he. it's... Listen, it's bad weather, but... Trevor Lawrence is a good quarterback, yep. and Chris Kirk's a good wide receiver. So I think if you normally start Christian Kirk, you're lowering expectations. But again, top 20 play for me today. Uh, so Yep. Zonovan, Bam Knight, uh, who looked like he was going to take over the Jets' backfield. He is dealing with an injury. He is likely going to be, I mean, he looks like he's going to be 50-50, whether he's going to play. If he does play, are you starting him? And if he doesn't, any interest in Michael Carter or Ty Johnson? If Bam Knight is out, then I'm definitely interested in Michael Carter as the Jaguars have allowed at least 100 yards rushing now in five straight games. And obviously with bad weather, you expect them to be more run heavy, especially Zach Wilson making his second start in this game. And, you know, whatever. The, the, he's not the reason the Jets want, lost last week. Zach Wilson is not the reason the Jets lost last week. Uh. But he's def, he, he didn't help him win either. You know what I mean? Like I, There were some time management issues down the stretch um, there, for the, for, there for the Jets. But uh, whatever. If Bam Knight is out, yes, I do think Michael Carter becomes uh, pretty interesting. But assuming Z Bam Knight is actually active, I think he's a flex. I think he's a, you know, I think he's a mid-tier flex. Again, it's a nice matchup with Jacksonville, as I've talked about. Uh, but on the other hand, he's, you know, he, he's a little bit banged up as well. Uh, if there's a positive here, it's that, you know, when he was out there last week, there were 17 running back carries. Bam Knight got 13 of them. Yep. Like, it was really his backfield uh, and played basically half the snaps. So... Uh, Bam Knight to me, touchdown dependent flex. Michael Carter, I not, want no interest in him if Bam Knight's active, but if Bam Knight is out, then Michael Carter would become, you know, low end RB2, high end flex for me. Yep. I suspect as well with how Zach Wilson looked against the Lions uh, that they, they will go out of their way, particularly in the conditions to absolutely hide Zach Wilson in a game that you suspect just with the total being 37, with how good the defense is, that you will be able to run the ball. And even yeah. if it's not that efficient, so long as you're avoiding turnovers, this game should be close at the end. So would expect that whoever the Jets go with that running back is going to be fantasy viable. Yeah, I mean, Jag Jags are a bottom 10 run defense over the last four weeks. Yep, absolutely. So uh, pass catches for the Jets, uh, which is grim. It's a grim little topic outside of Garrett Wilson. Uh, who is the prohibitive favorite now for Offensive Rookie of the Year. He was able to put up stats with Zach Wilson despite how badly Zach Wilson played. He did need nine targets to get four catches. And my concern would be that there were two 33-yarders in there and you don't want your wide receiver to have to depend on big plays from Zach Wilson to get his production. Also, I think it's probably pretty unlikely Garrett Wilson gets in the end zone just given the conditions and given the Zach Wilson. Uh, but what are you doing with Garrett Wilson? He's just a no-brainer start. I'm just still starting him. I've lowered expectations. He's my wide receiver 18, but he's had at least 90 receiving yards in three of the last four. He's got a 25% target share uh, in the last four games that he's played uh, with Zach Wilson, right? Um, and the 90 yards has come in three of the last four with Wilson under center. So I think just based on, on target share and honestly just talent, that I just don't know how you bench Garrett Wilson. I, I agree with everything you just said, but normally in a matchup like this, he'd be probably like top 12, and yeah. I have him at 18 this week. I think that's fair enough. So the total in this but game. I'm not like, but I'm not interested in Corey Davis or Tyler Conklin or Elijah Moore or you know, any of the complimentary pass catchers uh, to uh, Garrett Wilson. Yep, I'm with you there. So the line in this game now is Jets minus 2.5. It opened pick, moved to 2.5. Mainly off the Quinn and Williams news that he's in playing. Also... Cam Robinson being done for the year for the Jags, that's a big deal because now their offensive line is not great, whereas it had been keeping Lawrence upright. The total is 37. Uh, who wins this game tonight, Matthew? Where's your lean? Uh, I'm going to say the Swaguars. Wow. I'm going to say the okay. Swaguars. I mean, this boils down, honestly, like which matchup do I, I – I think it's close, but uh, I don't feel super confident about the pick. I just think that – I think I prefer – in terms of matchups, 
I got I feel better about Trevor Lawrence against the Jets defense than I do about Zach Wilson against the Jaguars defense. The Jaguars defense isn't good, and Zach Wilson isn't good. But I just think in terms of having to make a make a play, I think I think we got a better shot of Trevor Lawrence making a, a fantastic play against the Jets defense than we do of, of Zach Wilson making one against the Jaguars defense. Yep, I think that makes sense. And are but, you taking the Jets? I would take the Jags a plus two and a half just because yeah. of Zach Wilson. And look, last week. Uh, when the Jets were minus one and a half point favorites over the Lions. I was looking at that and I spoke to some friends who bet professionally on the NFL. That's all they do. They just bet on the NFL for a living. Uh, and if they're wrong, then, I mean, they, they, they don't have any money. Like, this is what they do. Don't try this at home. Uh, and I was trying to get a feel for, because I like the Jets minus one and a half because I thought this defense is incredible. It's Jared Goff outdoors. I think the Lions offense is a little bit overrated. Lions defense isn't great. And they talked me out of it because they were like, you don't know how bad Zach Wilson is. Like, you're not taking that enough into account. He is, in terms of how betters approach the NFL, Zach Wilson is just about the, the lowest-rated quarterback in the league, and he played like it against the Lions. He had some big throws, and he, particularly in the first half, he played really well. But in the second half, it was just all of the bad Zach. He missed so many big plays, missed Braxton Berrios, missed Elijah Moore, missed Garrett Wilson, that... I just can't take Zach. I can't put money on Zach Wilson until he shows something. I do think tonight they will run the ball a ton, so it will be close. Might even lean the under. This game feels like it's going to be 17-14, right? Right. Uh, but hopefully, I mean, I'll hopefully just, Zach Wilson I, can show something. I, will, I feel I will, bad for the guy. Yeah, I do, I do too. And, you know, it, I, I do feel bad for the guy um, as well. Uh, you know, listen, and he, he bought like uh, like mopeds or mini motorcycles for his offensive line. I saw that on social media, like really nice gift. So yeah, he's trying, yeah. you know, uh, but uh, Christmas presents for them. Uh, yeah, I just... He just seems broken at the moment. I'm not sure that's going to get fixed I, in the middle of the season. I don't think so either. It feels like he might need a fresh start. Like he wouldn't yeah. be the first young quarterback that the New York media and New York fans have sort of broken down. And he's brought a lot of it on of itself as well. Like, you know, you play well, you get, you get you know, heroes welcome and... You don't, and this is what happens. I will just say this. So I'm in the playoffs in a deep dynasty league with a bunch of um, uh, other fantasy analysts like um, Evan Silva and Graham Barfield and Scott Barrett uh, and, you know, Rich Rebar, Lord Reeves, or all these guys are in it. And so I'm playing uh, Jeff Collins, who's a big DFS player and analyst, uh, Jeff L. Hefe on Twitter. And so I have Ryan Tannehill as my number two. Mahomes is my QB1 in this yep. dynasty league. And uh, I'm the number two seed uh, this year, and I'm a former champion of the league. None of that, none of that's relevant. I just sort of want to throw <laughs> yes, that in there, a little so. humble brag. No big deal, MBD. Um, uh, but what I would say is, is that just to that point. So I, I lost t Ryan Tannehill. So my second quarterback in this league is here's my choices: Zach Wilson, Taylor Heineke, or Brock Purdy. And I am choosing not Zach Wilson. Yes. I mean, I mean how how can you? Right. It, particularly in the conditions. If it was in. If for some reason they were playing the Jags in a dome, which would never happen, but if that was the case, maybe you'd feel a bit better about it, but with the conditions. Even in Jacksonville, I yeah. might feel bad, but like in the bad conditions, yes, I'm going to be picking between a quarterback that's either facing the Commanders um, uh, and Chase Young's return. Yeah. News just came out d during the show that Chase Young's is expected to make his debut against the Niners this weekend, or Brock Purdy against my Commanders, you know, yep. Brock Purdy against my Commanders, or worse, Taylor Heineke against, you know, yeah. probably the best defense in the NFL. So. That's a tough one. Yeah, right. it is. Let's get to the most bet props on BetMGM. It's Travis Etienne to score the first touchdown. That's plus 550. Travis Etienne, anytime touchdown scorer, plus 110. And then Matthew's man, his foe, Evan Engram, over 40 and a half receiving yards. That's minus 115. Yep. Uh, look, I think it's going to be a big Travis Etienne game tonight. Expect that... Uh, you know, at plus 110, I don't mind it for any time touchdown score. He hasn't had a ton of touchdowns this year, though. So uh, my best bet is Garrett Wilson under 56 and a half receiving yards because of all the stuff that we talked about. I just think with the conditions, with Zach as his quarterback, with needing the big plays last week in better conditions to go uh, well over, uh, I just don't trust it. I think that Garrett Wilson will go under 56 and a half yards tonight. What do you like? I'm going to take an under as well. Zay Jones under 43 and a half receiving yards. He's gone over this number only in games in which he's seen eight or more targets in a game in which we don't expect a lot of scoring to happen. I don't know if he gets there. By the way, he's going to see the most of Sauce Gardner again. Kirk in the slot. My expectation is is that they try to run a lot here, uh, given the given the uh, given the weather, and that they also look at Kirk and Ingram. So give me the under on Zay Jones, 
who uh, at 43 and a half, as the Jets have allowed the fewest yards and the lowest catch rate to perimeter wide receivers, of course. Jones aligns on the perimeter uh, almost 70% of the time. I'll also just say, like, listen, the juice is not great, but give me the under on one and a half passing touchdowns for Trevor Lawrence here. Yeah, uh, I, like I mean, like, again, 11 straight games that the Jets have allowed one or fewer touchdown passes. Bad weather tonight. Uh, my expectation here is that it's not a great game for Trevor Lawrence. So I'm going to take the under. Again, it's the juice is like 190, yeah, minus 190. So right. Just, you Still know, but I'm, I'm, uh, but I'm, I'm going to take the under on one and a half. And the last one I'll give you here. How about Travis Etienne over 16 and a half rushing attempts? Again, 17 or more carries in each of the last two games. Four of the last five teams to face the Jets had 23 running back carries. Really, the backfield is all him. Bad weather game. Jets are uh, Jets are worse against the run than they are against the pass. So, give me the over on 16 and a half rushing attempts for Travis Etienne. Yep. I like All right, that. my friend. Love hate is up now on RotorWorld.com. It is closing time, which means you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. For Jay Croucher, I am Matthew Berry. Good luck with Thursday night football tonight. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Peace out. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and RotorWorld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from RotorWorld, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.